Hello out there. I hope you're ready to look at some statistics on this beautiful day, okay? So what we're going to do today is actually calculating the correlation. How do we calculate this correlation? And still look at the meaning of this correlation, okay? And doing your maths out there, remember, I'd like you to try some of the questions with, with, with me. Have your calculator with you and try the problem. It's not about observing only, it's try to do the mathematics behind, okay? Let's see what we have, okay? So, what we're going to do now is some of the keywords is correlation, standard deviation, and mean. What is correlation? Okay, we spoke about correlation. Correlation is the association between two variables. Okay, an example I can think about is the oil price and petrol price. If oil price goes up, the petrol price goes up. So there is a positive correlation between the two because the two moves together up. Okay, and negative correlation if one moves up the other moves down okay it could be something like this inflation remember that inflation if inflation increase the power of money decreases the value of money decreases so there's a negative correlation between inflation and the value of money okay so that's the correlation and what is standard deviation okay Remember, the standard deviation is the average deviation from the mean. And remember that the mean, when I talk about the mean, we talk about the average, denoted by x bar, if you remember. The average is the mean, the average bar. Is how far are you from the mean, okay? If I have set of data, the average is take everything, divided by how many numbers we have. That's the average, the mean. Standard deviation is how far are you from the average? It's the deviation average from the mean. Okay, that's the standard deviation. Okay. Then the mean, just spoke about that, is the average. But we have two different kind of mean, group data and raw data. Raw data is data given like one, two, three, four, five. It's raw data, okay? To calculate the mean for raw data, I just add all the data divided by the sample size. But where group data, it could be uh, boys between 10 and 5. What is their shoe size? Boys between 10 and 15. So the data is grouped. And to calculate the mean, we use midpoints, okay? So the mean is the average, could be raw data, could be the mean, okay? So I'd just like you to remember what is correlation, standard deviation, mean, and the mean, okay? So we're going to look at correlations now, okay? So, what is correlation? So correlation is the, is the linear correlation coefficient. So we're going to calculate this coefficient. How do we calculate this? So it's denoted by letter R, which is the correlation. It's a measure, okay, it's measure something, quantify something. So this measure, which tells us the strength and the direction of a relationship between the variables. Very important, it tells us the strength and the direction. The strength means the association. And the direction, we're talking here about whether it's negative or positive. Positive, move together, negative, if one moves up, other moves down, okay? It's the strength and the direction. So the correlation coefficient is between negative one and one. So the value of the correlation coefficient, can I come with a correlation coefficient of two? No, 
because 2 is not between minus 1 and 1. But can correlation be 0 0.7? Yes. Why 0 0.7? Because 0 0.7 is between negative 1 and 1. Can correlation be negative 3? No, it can't be. Negative 3, I mean, let's so it's from minus 1 to 1, negative 3. It's smaller than minus 1. It's not in that range between minus 1 and 1. Correlation coefficient is between minus 1 and 1. That's it. we together, guys. Fantastic. Now, correlation coefficient, we said, is between minus 1 and 1. So when r is negative 1, there is a perfect negative correlation. Okay, it's a perfect negative correlation. But what about when R is zero? There is no correlation. There's no correlation. There's no relationship between the two variables. But if R is one, there is a perfect positive correlation. Okay. Minus one, negative, perfect correlation, zero, no correlation, no association between the two variables. One perfect correlation between the two variables. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to use the simulation, okay? The simulation, what we're going to get is our y there, which is our dependent variable, our x, which is independent variable, and to plot some point there and really Estimate the correlation. I'd like you to estimate in your head first before uh, the simulation can really tell us what is the correlation. Let's look at what does that look like, okay? So there I am here. So what I would like us to do, okay? So here what I'd like us to do, we have negative one correlation. There is a line with negative one correlation. So we can see it's negative one. What does negative one mean? It's perfect negative correlation. What must I do for me to get zero correlation? What, what must I do? Let's look at what you must do to the points. If I move the points from the line, let's see what happens. If I move, what happens? Let's look at that. What happens? The correlation. Let's look at that. What has happened to the correlation? I'm moving all the points. Can you see? 0 point, 0 0.27 now. I want to make this close to zero as possible. 0. Point. Okay, 0 0.23. It's increasing there. Yeah, there. Almost there. We're getting zero. Correlation is zero. What does that mean? There's no relationship. Look at this. We can't even draw a line, a straight line that is close to those points. Okay. What about, how does this line look like if R is negative one? Negative one, so our points will be going down. Are we together? Let's look at that. Something like that. Let's see there. Because I'm getting a negative relationship. Let's look at that. Let's move that point somewhere there. You look at this. Can you see this is strong? Why strong? Negative 0 0.98, close to negative 1. So that's strong negative correlation. Are we all together? So that's a negative correlation. So but a positive correlation, what must happen? Positive We'll have to move our lines this way. Let's do that. Let's do that because I can get a straight line, which is positive. Can you see that? My correlation changing from negative to positive. Can you all see that? So what is happening here? 0 0.98 positive. Strong positive correlation. Okay, beautiful. Now, Let's go back and see what we have here. So this is what we had by looking at simulation. So 
Now, what are we going to do is to look at whether does correlation exist? We can to look at a plot and say, does correlation really exist? Okay. What are we going to do? We're going to look at that after the break. What I'd like you to do during break is to think about this. How will I tell whether correlation exists? Take that time. After the break, we're going to look at how do we see that? Okay. See you shortly. Hello out there. Welcome back once again. We're still on statistics and we're looking at calculations of correlations okay hope you're ready out there with your pen and paper and let's look what do we have okay so this is a part we're going to look at whether given a scatter plot does a correlation exist how can we tell if correlation exists okay so we do know that the correlation is between negative one and one and if correlation is zero there's no correlation Okay, if correlation is one, we have a perfect correlation, positive perfect correlation. And if correlation is negative one, it's a perfect negative correlation. Okay, great. So let's see now. So we, we have this scatter plot. Uh, we have our y axis there and our axis there. And we have points on that Cartesian plane, which is a scatter plot. Does correlation exist? Do you think it exists by looking at this? Okay, I think it does. Is this a negative or a positive? Is that a strong or weak? If it's strong correlation, can you quantify the value? Can you give me the value, the number? Is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, approximately that, 0 0.9. So we know that it is, it's positive because we can draw a straight line with a positive gradient because the slope m is bigger than 0. We're talking about the slope here. It's positive. Going up, so it's uh, positive. Okay, let's see. So this is strong positive correlation. So the correlation is approximately 0 0.9. Okay. Would you have guessed that? What is your guess? Okay. I think I could have guessed 0 0.8. I could have wanted 0 0.8. But the correct actually is uh, 0 0.9. What if you got 0 0.8? Yeah, that's pretty close. That's okay, okay. Okay, great, if you guessed that. Now let's look at the second one. Let's look at this one. What is your guess? Look at this correlation. We have all the scatter plot given to us. Does a correlation exist? Just ask yourself first. I think it does exist. If it does exist, is that a positive, negative, and what is the value of the correlation? By looking at this, I can draw a straight line. And the slope, or the gradient, is bigger than zero, meaning positive. So it's a positive correlation. OK? What is the value? What do you want to guess? Is that a perfect? Definitely not perfect. 0.5? I don't think so. What do you think? 0 0.6? 0 0.7? Okay. So let's see what we have here. So we have fairly positive, we do agree, but fairly strong. And the correlation coefficient, it's approximately 0 0.7. Were you close to your guess? Was that close to 0 0.7? What if you guessed 0 0.65, 0 0.66? That's okay. 
that's acceptable. It's approximately 0 0.7, okay? The answer is not unique, okay? Doesn't mean all of you must come with close to 0 0.7. 0 0.66 is fine, 0 0.7 is fine, 0 .0, 0 0.69 is fine, okay? As long as you're close to that value, the 0 0.7, that's okay. Let's look at the next one. Hmm, we have our scatter plot given here. Uh, if I have to draw the equation of a line, I'll still draw a straight line with a positive gradient. So it's a positive correlation. Mm. But what about the value? Okay. Or do you think there's no correlation? I think there is correlation because there's a trend going up. I can draw a straight line, which is and clustered around those points. What is your value? One, can be one, because one is perfect correlation. All the points must be on a line. 0 0.9, no, because 0 0.9 is strong. 0 0.8 is still strong. 0 0.8 is weak. 0 0.6, I mean weak. What can we go with that? Let's see. I would like you to think of a number, okay? Let's see what we have. So this is positive, we agree positive, weak. And the correlation is approximately 0 0.4. What if you got 0 0.45? Yep. What if you got 0 0.38? Yes, that's close to 0 0.4. That would be acceptable, okay? Now, let's look at more. What about this? So, I can draw a straight line, but with a negative gradient. What about your correlation? I think this is negative, but strong. What is your value? I'd like you to guess your value. Negative 0 0.9? Negative 0 0.8? Let's see what we have. So, we have negative, and this is fairly strong, approximately negative 0 0.7. That's the correlation coefficient. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Interesting one. Is there no correlation here? Is there no correlation? I think there is. It does exist. Positive or negative? Negative, because I can get, get a, I can fit, I can get a straight line with a negative gradient, a negative slope. What is the correlation out there? Is it negative? We know it's negative. Negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.6. Let's see what we have. So we have negative, we agree it's a negative. It's a negative, weak correlation, and the correlation coefficient is approximately negative 0.4. Do we expect you to get negative 0 0.4 on the dot? No. Do you have something close to negative 0 0.4? Yes. If you have something close to that, that's okay. Because we're saying it's approximately close to negative 0 0.4. Okay. So, and what about this one now? Can I fit a line? Can I go up, down? Hmm? Can I fit a line going up, down? Oh, is there correlation? I don't think there's a negative correlation or positive correlation. I don't think there's a correlation there. What do you think? Okay, so, here we have no correlation at all. So the correlation coefficient will be zero. Okay, there's no correlation between x and y in this case. Fantastic. Now let's look at our summary on correlation. So we say we have this positive correlation, negative correlation, and the strength of the correlation. Okay. So no correlation, 
is when correlation is zero. Are we all together? Very weak correlation. Very weak correlation can be, remember, can be positive or can be negative. Very weak if it's from zero to 0 0.25. Zero to 0 0.25, that's very weak. Okay? And if it's negative, negative 0 0.5 to zero, also that will be negative but very weak correlation. And what about 0 0.5 to 0 0.25? That is weak. So we have very weak, then weak. But you have positive and negative. That will be negative 0 0.5 to negative 0 0.25. That will be anything. That will be weak negative correlation. And we also have moderate Moderate is 0 0.5 to 0 0.75. Also, it can be negative. So this would be negative, moderate correlation. Are we together? If, it's, if R is between minus 0 0.75 to negative 0 0.5. Then our strong positive correlation, 0 0.75 to 0 0.9. That is our strong correlation, OK? Positive, but negative will be negative 0 0.9 to negative 0 0.75. That will be negative strong correlation. But very strong. What is very strong? Very strong, guys, we're talking about 0 0.9 to 1. That's very strong correlation. Or also if it's negative, between negative 1 and 0 0.9, that will be Strong negative correlation. And lastly, perfect correlation, which is one, which is negative, positive perfect correlation, and negative one. Those are our two perfect correlation. Okay, guys, now we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to look at actually how do we really calculate this correlation? Okay? How do we calculate this using our calculator or using formula or something like that? I hope to see you after the break uh, with more statistics. Hello out there, welcome back once again, and we're still on statistics, and we're looking at correlations. So this part of our lesson, what we'd like to look at is calculation. How do we calculate this correlation? So we know now what is perfect correlation, what is no correlation, what is weak correlation mean. But how do we calculate this? Okay. So let's see how we really actually calculate that correlation coefficient. So we, we're going to look at calculate the, correla uh, the correlation coefficient. So we have a question here. So a cardiologist wants to test the relationship between a resting heart rate and the peak heart rate during exercise. Okay. So the heart rate is measured in beats per minute, okay? Then a set of data was generated from 12 study participants after they had a run on a treadmill at 10 kilometers per hour for 10 minutes. Okay, guys? Okay? So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So a set of data is generated from 12 study participants after they had a run on a treadmill at 10, 10 kilometers per hour for 10 minutes. Okay. So what do we have here? We have resting heart rate and the peak heart rate. Okay. So resting heart rate is actually, if I'm not doing any exercise or walking, my heart is pumping less blood it's into the body. So the heart rate becomes lower. 
the moment they start engaging in an exercise or something of that nature or moving or exercising, then the heart rate increases. Okay. So the resting heart rate, when I'm resting, kind of relaxed, and heart peak is when I'm exercising optimally. Okay. So what we have here is that the resting heart rate for uh, first person was 48, and the peak heart rate was 138. Similarly, the last person's uh, resting heart rate was 62, and the peak heart rate was 155. So now, let's look at the first question. What do we have to do here? So the question, given the same data, we have to draw a scatter plot of the data using resting heart rate as the x-axis. So this would be our x and that would be our y. Okay, remember, our scatter plot is x, then y, and we just put all the coordinates. Okay. Let's see what we have to do. So we have to choose a suitable scale. That's very important for the axis. Draw the axis, very important, and plot points. Remember points, for example, this as a point will be 48 and 138. So this will be X and that will be Y as a point. And we have to do for each and every point from here all the way to 62 and 155. Let's see what we get. This is what you get if you put all the points, okay? So we can see that uh, 48 and 138, 48 is somewhere there, 138 is somewhere there, we get that point. So all the points have been done for us, which is the peak heart rate on the y-axis and the resting heart rate on the x-axis. By looking at this, does correlation exist? Yes, I think it exists. Is a correlation negative or positive? I think the correlation is actually positive because you can draw a straight line with a positive gradient. Okay. And I think it's a strong positive correlation. Okay. That's the first question. Now, without using a calculator, I mean, without using a calculator, find the correlation coefficient, R. And after that, we're going to confirm using a calculator, how do we calculate this correlation coefficient? Okay, we have the data. How do we calculate this correlation coefficient? Well, it's positive uh, correlation and it's strong. Let's see how we do that without using a calculator. So calculating the correlation coefficient, we have to use this formula. Okay, the coefficient correlation is B times, the B is the gradient of that line, of the line, the standard deviation of X over the standard deviation of Y. Okay, we'll explore that what it means. The coefficient is just the gradient, the slope of the line of best fit, the standard deviation for X and the standard deviation for Y. B, estimate the slope, okay, we agree on that. And that sigma x is a standard deviation, and that is a standard deviation for y also. Okay, let's see. Then the standard deviation we know is given by this formula, and we know the standard deviation is the average deviation from the mean, okay. That it's included on your formula sheet as a standard deviation. Okay. And one can actually use the calculator to calculate the standard deviation also. Let's see how we do this. So firstly, what we have to do is to determine, so we're given that the, we're still using the same table, is to find x bar and y bar. This is the average for x and the average for y. Let's see how we do this. So the average for x, meaning we add everything there, are we all together, divided by n. n is 12. So this is the sum of everything divided by 12. We get that the average resting heart rate is 71. 
because that's x, remember, and this is y. And the average for y, we add everything all the way to there, divided by what? By the total, which is 12, which is n. So this is adding everything, divided by 12, then we get 154.83. So that's the peak heart rate. Are we all together? That's what we did. So we have the average for x and the average for y. Then from there, this is what we have. The resting heart rate, we can see that. And this table, we have the peak heart rate. Another way. What I have to do is to find x minus the mean squared. So it's just x minus the average. Then I square that. So that will be 48 minus the average, then square that. So we do for everything and for y also. And we know that the average is 71. And the average for y is 154.83. So we do the same thing for y. It's y, which is 138 minus 71. Then we square that. So this is what we get if we complete our table. Are we together? So how do we get this number? 48 minus 71 squared. That's what we get. How do we get that number? Is we use the y, 138 minus the average. We square the number. That's what we get. Then we complete our table. Then sigma, this sign, just add everything. We add everything. This is what we get. We just add everything. Similarly also, here we add that. This is what we get. We add the square deviation also. And this is our total. And we do similarly here. And this is our total. Let's see what we can do with this. So what are we going to do now is we know this, the standard deviation, okay? We know this, which is, where is this? There, we'll transfer that. And the sample size, which was 12. We just substitute everything. We get a thing about plus minus 3.26. We do this similarly with y, the square deviation there, which is the value we put there, we divide it by 12. And that's the value we get. And the B value is 1.96. Then what we do here is the standard deviation for X over the standard deviation for Y. And we multiply the two. That's what we get, which is 0 0.87. That's the correlation, which is actually strong positive correlation. Okay. You, without using a calculator. Usually, I would use my calculator to calculate correlation, unless you, know, you don't have your calculator, or they say without using a calculator. It's just a long and tedious calculation, okay? So, you can, you, with using a calculator, some of you, you might have a sharp calculator, and some of you, you might have what, a uh, cashew. Using a cal sharp calculator, you have to enter your x and y, so this is our x and this is our y, into your calculator in stats mode, plus statistics mode. So in a sharp calculator, this is the process you follow to calculate correlation, okay? I will demonstrate this using a Casio calculator. How do you calculate the correlation coefficient? Okay. So with a Casio calculator, let's see. If you go back with a Casio calculator, let's see, we have to enter our data also. This is our X and this is our Y, okay? So I've already have imported our data. We can see that 48, 138, which is X, okay? And we can see that uh, 56, 135, 
Okay, so how do you do that on a cashier calculator? You can see that is on cashier calculator, press shift, then stats, then five, three, then equal. Okay, are we together? Are we all together? If you get your stats table, you put all the data. So that's where we are. So I have my table, I put all my data, my X and Y. After putting my data, I'm going to say AC. From there, I'll say shift one. One means the stats. Then from there, I have option one to seven. I can see the first option says type, two says data. If I put two, it will take me back to my data set, what I've inserted. So I can just say shift one again, seven, select regression. Select seven, I can see A, B, C, and X with a copy, Y with a copy. What I want is three, the correlation, and I'm just going to put three there, and I'm going to say equal then actually it gives me, so there should be 58, let's fix that. That should be 48, that's equal. So what I have to do is actually AC, shift one, then select seven, then select three, then equal. That's my correlation coefficient, which is approximately 0 0.87, which is exactly the same, I think, with what we, what we got without using a calculator, which is a strong positive correlation. Let's see, which is what you have. That's the correlation. Okay, so what can you conclude regarding the relationship between the resting heart rate after exercise? Are we all together? What can you conclude? There's a strong relationship, association between the two. Strong positive correlation. Okay, fantastic. So now what are we going to do is there is a strong positive linear relationship between the resting heart rate and peak heart rate during exercise. This means that the higher your resting heart rate, the higher your peak heart rate during exercise, okay, likely to be. Are we together? Are we together? And usually, actually, with the heart rate, I mean, the more fitter you are and the more you exercise continuously, you, then your resting heart rate is lower and actually your peak heart rate, okay? You can try that if you have any of the um, heart rate measuring device, okay? Watch if you exercise, something of that nature, okay? Are we all together? Good, okay. So let's look at now at our summary, what we've looked at, guys, now. So we've looked at the scatter plot, and we said, what is a scatter plot? Our scatter plot is drawing all the points, the x and y, the independent and dependent variable. We put all the points, that's how we get our scatter plot. The correlation coefficient, the correlation coefficient we said is between negative one and one, where one is strong correlation, negative one, strong negative correlation, and zero is no correlation, okay? And we can calculate the correlation coefficient using a calculator, okay? You put your table and you calculate your correlation coefficient. And we've looked at the mean and the standard deviation. And the mean and standard deviation came in how do we calculate the correlation coefficient without using a calculator? Okay, we're together, guys. Okay. I hope you enjoyed it out there. Okay, and I really encourage you to continuously work hard and push. And the only way to do your mathematics is if you continuously work. Don't wait for the big test to come for you to start working. You do your maths even 30 minutes per day, an hour per day, every day. If you continue and you on that and you're consistent, that's the only thing that's going to make you successful in studying anything. Okay, we hope to see you soon, 
and remember to work continuously. Cheers out there.